Hi everyone, welcome back to this series on my channel where we take a deep dive into some of the most iconic families in The Sims franchise. Today we're going to be doing the Pleasant family, as you can tell by the title, so grab a drink, grab a snack and get cosy because there is a lot to go over and a lot of drama. I'm honestly really proud of this one, I feel like I did a really good job of bringing back the essence of this family from previous games, so let's just get right into it. So the Pleasants go all the way back to The Sims 1 where we started out with Les and Kinda Pleasant, cute little play on words there, and their son Jeff. I guess they run out of puns but we see him again in The Sims 2 as an elder ghost and before he died he got married to Diane Danders. And they seem to have a pleasant life together with their two children Daniel and Jennifer. Now the Pleasants that we know from all the other Sims games is Daniel's branch of the family tree but Jennifer did go on to get married and have a daughter with John Burb in The Sims 3 and they seem quite happy together. Meanwhile Daniel goes on to get married to a Sim called Mary Oldie. They're in sunlit tides on vacation for their honeymoon and their bio reads. Daniel and Mary Sue Pleasant are as pleasant as their name implies. After a beautiful whirlwind wedding they've come to the island for a relaxing honeymoon. The world is their oyster and their marriage is sure to stay this blissful forever, right? Which is a reference to The Sims 2 where they are back from their honeymoon and have had children. On the surface Daniel and Mary Sue Pleasant seem to have the perfect life but is their love a flimsy facade? And can Angela and Lilith make the right choices when it comes to love? Mary Sue is a career woman who has memories of denying intimacy a few times with Daniel which implies that they drifted apart. It's also really interesting to note the meaning behind the name Mary Sue which is a type of female character who is depicted as unrealistically lacking in flaws or weaknesses. So maybe that shows that she holds herself to a very high standard. Daniel still has his romance aspiration that he had from The Sims 3 which means he probably shouldn't have settled down and had children. So when you load into the game in The Sims 2 there is an event about to happen. Daniel's about to sleep with a maid, Kaylin Langerak, and based on the player's decisions, Daniel will either get caught or he will be able to do the deed and get away with it completely scot-free. You could say that he was kind of driven away into the maid's arms because Mary Sue never had time for him, which is obviously really, really sad for Mary Sue and the children. The couple are raising two twin girls, Lilith and Angela at this point, who are at the teen stage. These two are constantly fighting because they are total opposites and it's heavily implied that Angela was her parents' favourite and had better treatment, such as teaching her all of the important life basics and skills like potty training. So the twin girls are both dating seemingly questionable choices of boyfriends. So Angela is dating Dustin Broke who as his name suggests come from a different economic background. He's a rebel and in the criminal career so some people said he'd be a better fit for Lilith as they have similar personalities. And Lilith is dating Dirk Dreamer who has good grades, is charismatic and wants a high profile job but he's also from a hard background. A lot of people think that Lilith is actually better suited for Dustin and Angela is better suited for Dirk but I feel like they did this juxtaposition on purpose. I kind of feel like this makes sense because if you think about it, their parents were on paper this like perfect couple, or at least everybody else thought so. And so maybe through their opposite matching partners, Lilith and Angela are gonna be able to avoid that somehow. And I kind of think it's a poetic way of saying don't judge a book by its cover when it comes to relationships. So coming into The Sims 4, we have two versions of this family. We have the twin girls living in Brightchester in the Discover University pack, and we have a full family on the gallery. So in the Brightchester the version the girls have left home and are at university trying to navigate living together and their differences. Something that I had no idea about up until now is that both of their boyfriends Dustin Broke and Dirk Dreamer both exist in Get Famous. I recognise the names but I didn't put two and two together and realise that it was the same people. Now I know that the Sims 4 versions of everything isn't meant to be a dead copy of all of the previous games but I really feel like if we've got a connection with an odd character then it's kind of a shame to completely change it up. First of all let's talk about the actual pleasant family but I really wanted to bring the whole family back in this one so I ended up leaving the twins at university and just gave them a bit of a makeover I redid all of their outfits they hadn't really changed them that much from The Sims 2 just a few things that I felt like they didn't particularly look very realistic and I like my Sims to look a little bit real all while keeping the kind of maxis match look about them and I feel like we need to just talk about the skin overlay that I use for a moment now I use a skin overlay by Kaluna which is a non-default and just face skin overlay I don't really like changing the look of The Sims 4 too much but I do feel like a few things are kind of necessary like I'll use eyelashes, I use Kiko's eyelash remover to get rid of the blocky EA eyelashes and I replace them with uh, custom ones. I did use a little bit of CC for their outfits, I will link everything in the description as usual. If you go to the description and see that I haven't put anything there please remind me because I do sometimes forget there's normally quite a lot of links <laughs> for me to put in but do let me know if I've forgotten, I'll try my best to not forget this time. So I really tried to reflect Angela's personality, a bright bubbly positive personality into her outfits and I think I did a pretty good job with that. I did tweak her personality 
a little bit. I made her good, a foodie, neat and an overachiever. She's kind of the, the child that was kept to high standards and uh, was treated a little bit more positively than Lilith. I gave her a bunch of likes and dislikes. I really do try to give The Sims as much information as possible to give them the most unique personalities in my game. So coming over to Lilith, my version of her is very inspired by the Sims 4 original version, but I think stepped up a little bit. This hair that she's got currently is CC, but it's kind of like a variant of the version that she had from the base game or from Discover University. I think it just looks a little bit better on her. I think I changed her personality trait, so now she's is kleptomaniac, clumsy and self-assured. But I actually really like Lilith's kind of grungy aesthetic and overall vibe. She's kind of a very stereotypical character that like had a little bit of a harder upbringing and so that kind of reflects in her fashion choices and things like that but um, I guess, I don't know, I found that charming and I definitely wanted to keep her that way. But I didn't want to make her like super mean or evil or anything because I feel like that just doesn't really make sense for her character. So Angela is an art history student. Here we've got two people in in this little relationship panel that you might recognize now we're gonna have a look at those in a little while so I gave her a bunch of traits that I thought would really reflect her angelic side maybe a little bit to a flaw very trusting good emotional control good responsibility good manners all of those things coming over to Lilith I gave her obviously a very different array of skills she's really good at the mischief skill for example and although she's kind of quote unquote the bad sister I feel like she's got so much more of an interesting personality like gameplay wise there's so much much more you could do with Lilith rather than Angela I think but she's got all of the consequences of having quite a tough childhood uh, compared to her sister so irresponsible bad manners insensitive but I think that kind of makes her a little bit more lovable anyway so for the lot I have to thank Jessica Pye Whitey she really does put out all the stops on some of these builds and I just thought that this one was perfect for them I did declutter it slightly and tweaked the bedrooms a little bit just to fit Angela and Lilith's personalities a bit more I do go ahead and declutter some of the builds sometimes while it's great to have lots of details I think sometimes it might affect game performance and visually I get a little bit overstimulated if there's too much going on in the room I quite like to kind of focus on what my sims are doing but also have some detail you know I really don't like the, the base builds on the sims or the builds in the packs where it's just everything is very square and no detail, no clutter or anything. Jessica Pye YT does some amazing builds. I've shouted her out on this channel before, but she's got a YouTube channel where she actually shows her speed builds. I mean, you probably already know of her by now because she's pretty well known for doing amazing builds, but thanks to her for this one. So I did bring back Angela and Lily's parents in this one. I feel like I absolutely had to. So I divorced Mary Sue and Daniel, and I feel like I gave them the ending that they both would have wanted ultimately. So I feel like even though he had commitment issues and things like like that I feel like it would just be because he was in the wrong relationship he was with someone who wasn't very intimate and romantic although he did really really mess up by cheating on his wife he ultimately ended up finding love in the maid Kaylin Langerak I feel like this kind of makes it a little bit less bad that he cheated on his wife because he ended up cheating with someone that he was going to spend the rest of his life with rather than just like cheating to, to cheat. So this is my version of Daniel Pleasant. He still wants to be a really good dad and I feel like I wanted to give him a sort of friendly face. He has had a little bit of a personality crisis and has changed his traits because he has found new meaning in this new relationship. So he has a new personality. I gave him the romantic, loyal and outgoing traits and I gave him all the likes and dislikes that you would expect. So like likes intimacy, likes flirtation, likes compliments. For me, my excuse of this thing is that I feel like it's a little less tragic that he ended up being with her than just cheating on her and ruining his relationship with his wife and family for no reason. And to be honest, I think Mary Sue prefers to be by herself at this point. Like she's gotten past, you know, having young children and she's kind of had more time to reflect on her own things. So I feel like that would have just been their natural end anyway. So I really did my best to remake Kane in Langerac uh, based on a The Sims 2 version. I kept her personality as close as I could to that. So she's neat, romantic and family oriented. She wants a family with Daniel. Now it is completely up to you because as you know I'm going to be putting the save file up for download once this is all finished. It's completely up to you if Daniel stays this new man that he is and like is able to have another family with Kaylin or if he's a repeat offender and he decides to do exactly the same to Kaylin 
as what he did to Mary Sue. That's further down the line and I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. Honestly, I feel like I did a really good job of not only keeping her physical appearance like really recognizable from The Sims 2, but also like making her really pretty. I feel like she would have been attractive to make a man cheat on his wife uh, to that point. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how she turned out. I think she looks exactly like if you took Kaylin Langerak from The Sims 2 and just made her in Sims 4 graphics. That's what the result would be. She had quite a black and white palette because she was a maid, so she had the maid uniform on, and I wanted to carry that on in her like personal taste of aesthetic, just so she's a little bit recognisable, and also I feel like it suited her really well. And she's kind of the opposite of Mary Sue Oldie, so she is very home orientated, very loving, and wants to be the typical like stay at home wife, which is kind of nice because we have on one end someone who is super like stay home and family oriented and on the other end of the spectrum completely the opposite where it's like she prioritizes herself over anyone else which I support honestly both of those and everything in between so it's kind of nice to have two like mascots for both ends of the spectrum there and of course obviously it's not a case of having one or the other but in this case they are complete opposite so I felt like that made sense for this family so they live over here in Newcrest in this really nice family oriented neighborhood I've given them this little suburban house I found it on the gallery by No Lana Sims they have a speed build on their YouTube channel so if you want to see how this build was made I highly recommend going and checking that out. As usual I tweaked the interior just to match the family a little bit better. I wanted to make it look like they had just moved in so they've still got a few moving boxes in the garage and there's not necessarily tons of clutter in this house but that is a good thing because again it matches the fact that they might have just moved in. It's very neutral, very pretty. I feel like Kaylin would have had a lot of say in the decoration of this house but for now they seem to have a really perfect life together. I'm quite happy for them. I think Daniel was an absolute idiot for cheating on his wife but I kind of wanted everyone to have a happy ending in this story so honestly good for them. So they are currently in Engaged and Kaylin really wants to have children because she's family oriented sim and that's probably where I'm gonna leave them um, when you start the save file so it's up to you how this all unfolds. So as usual I went in and added all of the extra skills and hobbies and relationships and extra bonus personality traits for every sim so she doesn't get on too well with Daniel's children but she is trying to be a better stepmom. Personality wise she'd actually get on with Angela but Lilith is completely opposite to her so a little bit complicated and obviously has a very very bad relationship with Mary Sue. I gave her all the relevant skills that I thought she might have for being this like very happy positive homebody sim. So obviously we don't have the maid career in The Sims 4 and I figured at this point in time she might have had enough time to change career especially after she got together with Daniel who was essentially one of her clients so it might have been a bit weird for her to carry on being a maid after that. So I thought the best adapted career for her would have been maybe in education as she is a family oriented sim and she has that kind of of softness quality that is really handy for being around children and I gave her all of the appropriate bonus traits just to really round off her personality. Coming up to Daniel I kept him in the athlete career which I thought made the most sense. He still has a pretty good relationship with his daughters but I feel like they could never really truly forgive him for what he did which is completely fair and among some of the extra traits I gave him I made him irresponsible just because I thought that makes sense you know if you're going to be a cheater you're probably not going to have the best sense of responsibility especially towards your family so I thought that might be an interesting quality for the twins to have in their dad but like if they're going to learn responsibility from someone it's not going to be from him. So Mary Sue is living in a big house by herself she has a good relationship with her children but she is definitely a little bit of a workaholic and currently doesn't have anyone else in her life which is absolutely fine go off queen not everyone has to have a marriage you know and I feel like if she wants to focus on her career then good for her so I'll wait to leave her just by herself for now and who knows if she wants maybe she can find someone who's just as career oriented as her and they can both live a life of happiness but for now she is absolutely happy by herself I'm really sorry if the lighting is drastically changing during the course of this video I somehow have picked the shortest day of the year to record on um, so that's all on me but hopefully it's not too distracting so this is my version of Mary Sue I am really pleased with her I think she's really pretty but really like you can tell in her face and in her outfit that she is really career driven just a really well polished person she's very well put together very neat kind of like the exemplary high performing businesswoman I reflected all of her aesthetic tastes and decor tastes in her likes and dislikes as well as some more traditional taste in music and you will see that in the dislikes I put ambitionless sims romance enthusiasts homebody sims 
and flirtation. Obviously, this is relative to her story and I just thought it'd make perfect sense if going forward, she would not like those sims particularly either. So now let's have a little bit of a closer look at her mansion. Daniel just decided to jog on by, which is super weird. Like out of all the sims that could have like ran past um, in this moment, Daniel is here. She did really well for herself and it definitely shows in what she has. So this build I found on the gallery by Cocopa4, so massive thank you to them. Overall the house is very minimalist but I think that she wouldn't have any clutter anywhere or necessarily have you know trinkets or things like that i feel like this is very much like the rich person's stereotypical house everything's super monochromatic which i think just fits her perfectly i really didn't have to redecorate this house much at all she has got a lot of spare bedrooms upstairs but i feel like this would just be for when she has family coming over and given the fact that all of the big things that happen in this storyline is a little bit recent i feel like she would have not fully decorated all of the rooms in the house yet so i really wanted to tie that into her house and if you do play over it's up to you what those rooms could be maybe she could have an extra office or like different hobby rooms who knows she is a vice president in the business career and i feel like a sim with a really good parenting skill wouldn't have neglected one child for many many years so i didn't want to give her too many points in that skill i reflected the storyline in her relationships panel she gets on quite well with her children even lilith despite everything that happened but yeah she does not get on well with daniel or kaylin at all coming over to del sol valley from the get famous pack as you can see this world is nearly complete so i've got a lot of other things to share with you guys in different videos but for now we're going to be talking about Dustin Broke and Dirk Dreamer. So I think we're going to start with Dirk. As I mentioned earlier Dirk was the childhood sweetheart of Lilith. As you can see I did change him up a little bit. I did darken him a little bit just so he looks a little bit more like his previous versions. I don't really like the fact that he got lightened in this so uh, I reflected that and he actually had blue eyes in The Sims 2 which I brought back. I really wanted to make Dirk sophisticated because he kind of grew up out of his tough condition and kind of got a taste of the high life so he really likes art and food and things like that and he is a genius which I think he actually had that trait from before and I gave him the insider trait too but yeah just overall I wanted to give him a polished and well-dressed look but also kind of minimalist because I feel like he has good taste but he has, doesn't have extravagant taste so those are his outfits so this amazing build was made by the in sims now they make stop motion videos of their builds on the channel so definitely go check that out if you want to see how this one was made. I think it is one of my favourite builds that I've ever come across in the gallery. I absolutely loved how it was decorated. It really changes from the like blue suburban houses that you see so much in The Sims so I really loved it and it's not overcomplicated. I don't get overwhelmed when I'm looking at this build so it's really really nice and I thought it was just the perfect house for this new and improved Dirk Dreamer. I just think it really reflects his taste and something that I really like to see in builds is high ceilings. So he's kind of got this mezzanine thing going on for his bedroom and a really nice and original ensuite bathroom. So this is where he sits and creates. So I put him into the style influencer career. I just feel like this is a career that you have more like celebrities I guess. So I gave him all of the relative skills for that career and like some more creative skills I guess. He did keep his passion for technology but it just hasn't like made him famous and isn't his main focus in his career. He unfortunately is no longer with Lilith. They did have a relationship until fairly recently in the game but I figured that they would have broken things off just because of how different they are. Now I know earlier on I said opposites attract and I think they can to some extent but they were living really really different lives. I feel like Lilith is kind of anti-celebrity and probably a little bit more into chaos and upheaval rather than you know like a trendy celebrity lifestyle but he did stay kind of acquaintances slash friends with her so that didn't end necessarily on a bad note. He's also friends with Dustin because of course he would have known him when he was a kid. They all went to the same school and I feel like if you're dating someone and they've got a twin sister who has a boyfriend you probably all know each other and as per usual I went ahead and gave him a bunch of bonus traits to reflect his career, his skills and his personality. So we're going to come over to Dustin in a second. So as you can see he's living over here in this neighbourhood. I think Get Famous is based on LA in America so I feel like this is a kind of standard like suburban LA area or it's very much more residential. It says it's for up and coming stars but I feel like it's just more of like a modest area. So let's have a quick look at him in Cass. 
So as you can see, he resembles a lot more the Sims 2 version of himself than the Sims 4 version, which I think just makes more sense. So he had a very tough upbringing and I wanted to reflect that in his the way that he presents himself. He's not a bad person, but he definitely has a more turbulent personality and I wanted to reflect his bad boy personality in the way he dressed. A lot more casual, I guess, more sort of streetwear. And honestly, I feel like I did a pretty good job at recreating, again, the same way as I did for Kaylin the kind of the sims 2 face but in the sims 4. I just feel like it's more fun and more relatable when you can see the previous version of that sim in the current sim. I feel like you can kind of get a little bit more attached and like the story was canon sort of thing. So amongst his likes and dislikes we have deception, rascals, mischief, pranks, malicious interactions, but he also likes romance enthusiasts, emotional decision makers, and he dislikes compliments. I feel like that might make him feel a little bit uncomfortable and deep thoughts. But yeah, I definitely wanted to make him a bit more of a complex character, a little bit more troubled. That's had to deal with a lot in his life as his last name suggests. And so now we can see that he is living in a trailer. For me, it can be quite boring if all of the sims live in very comfortable situations with the same sort of house and same sort of lifestyle so for dustin i really wanted to give him a little bit of an alternative existence his life has been a little bit more challenging so i love that that kind of adds to the diversity of my different characters so this build was made by simlissy another one of my favorite build creators i did tweak it slightly but this was perfect because it was designed for a conspiracy theorist so using a few things from the strangerville pack it's a very crammed space but he does have all of the essentials and he lives very modestly. Over here he's got a little listening station and in the tiny bit of gameplay that I did do on this save file um, he went to the Langrab's house and planted a bug on Jeffrey Langrab because he is kind of anti-establishment and anti-rich so he definitely is kind of an activist in that way. Although it is gameplay made for Strangerville I just thought this was a fun thing that he could go and do. I'm not sure if he could actually hear anything. Um, I think you can check on the station and give that a go but um, I'll keep you guys updated if I do do that. So that's his kind of work area slash office. We have a living space. Now it's a little bit run down and there's papers everywhere and posts that are all like super relevant to the way that he lives. So he's in the criminal career and he is an anonymous ghost which implies that he is quite handy at doing things like hacking. He's not just a random thug you know he kind of does have a, a little bit of a meaning to what he's doing and so obviously I gave him the skills that he would need such as programming, mischief, even a little bit of charisma and handiness. So as you can see he is currently still with Angela. Now I thought it would be fun to keep one of the two sisters in the relationship with their childhood sweetheart. She is definitely dating a bad boy. I just think it's interesting from a gameplay point of view to have these like complete opposite sims that end up actually having a soft spot for each other although they're like completely different. It's the kind of like the forbidden fruit for Angela and like Dustin is kind of like attracted to the opposite of how he is. As you can see Dustin gets on well with both Angela and Lilith. I figured he could be friends with Lilith and more than friends of Angela. He has a bad reputation as well and Angela has a good reputation so I really love the juxtaposition of these two characters. But I really love how this story ended up branching off in so many different ways. You know you've got Mary Sue on the one hand who's got a great reputation who's really high up in a career and you've got Dustin on the other hand who is like a complete reject from society but you kind of root for him you kind of want him to do well even though he's a criminal it just mixes up the gameplay and I feel like you've got a little bit more to get behind so let me know in the comments what you thought about all of this do you think Dustin and Angela should stay together do you think that Dirk and Lilith should have stayed together or even Daniel and Mary Sue I don't know maybe you think I'm too nice with Daniel and he shouldn't have had a happy ending but that's also the point of making a save file it's like I'm making all of of this as like a base and then it's up to you to you know carry on that story or completely change it so which is why I'm so excited to share it at the end. I know these videos are coming out a little bit slowly at the moment there's a few months in between each one but it's because I'm trying to find a balance of what works for me and I think I think I've got on top of it now and I think I'm going to be able to put a few more videos out a little bit more consistently. In the meantime, feel free to check out my YouTube shorts and my TikToks, but I'm definitely working on being able to post at least maybe one a week of these sorts of videos just to get the ball rolling a bit quicker on the save file. Let me know what you want to see next. Is there any other families that you can think of from The Sims 1, 2 or 3 that you think should have been put in The Sims 4 but kind of got unjustly missed out? I hope you enjoyed this one. We ended up going over five different households, so it was a little bit of a longer one, but I hope this kind of format is enjoyable for you guys. Also I hope you had a great Christmas if you do celebrate Christmas and a happy new year. There's going to be a lot more content coming from me in the following year so I can't wait to share all that with you guys and I will see you all very soon. Bye guys!